Okay, you found your support in cracking this specific safe. This is the Sentry John D Brush Sentry safe. And it's an old model. When I got the request to um, crack this model, it was a request by a friend. He was uh, not sure what exact type it was, so I did some research on the internet to find out what type of vault it could be, what kind of safe it would be, and how to crack it. So the only thing I found was someone who did a destructive uh, version of opening this safe. And that was not what I was looking for, although through this video I found some information on what the mechanism is in this safe. So I will help you out. If you want to crack the safe without breaking it, uh, please follow this video to see what I did and maybe this can help you too. So let's get to work. This type of safe has a more or less standard combination lock like this. You can turn it both ways. And there's a latch, and the latch cannot turn completely to open the door, which is normal. With the newer types of these combination locks, there is no connection between the latch and the dial. At least, you cannot feel it. With this one, you can. So that's a big advantage in opening this type of lock. So how that works is a bit like follows. Uh, this is a rough scratch sketch of the safe, with the door opened. And on the inside are three wheels um, and the wheels are a little bit closer to each other in the real world but to explain this there is a third wheel a second wheel and a first wheel and the third wheel in this case in this uh, safe the third wheel is connected to the dial on the outside so there's a um, not just a loose connection, like it's somehow you can turn it, but it's a real fixed connection. So the shaft going through uh, all those wheels, and then it's fixed to the third wheel. So that means turning this dial is turning this third wheel uh, one on one. The second and the first wheel, they are connected through uh, little pins which take along the wheel depending on the, the, the position of the previous wheel. So if I turn the third wheel, the second wheel will only turn if it hits this pin. And then it will turn along, same for the first one. So that's very important to know because getting this fixed connection between those two helps us uh, to figure out how to dial this. And you can see it a little bit when I turn it. Let's fix the camera. So I have both hands available. And I can turn this freely now. But when I pull, pull down the latch as far as I can, this, this wheel somehow gets fixed. And you can also see and hear some movement uh, between well, it seems like it's in a gate or something. And if I release it a little bit and I go to the... There's another one. So there is a, a relationship between uh, pulling down or pushing down this uh, latch, this uh, handle, and uh, the friction on this wheel. So that's very interesting because like in uh, small combination locks, you can also somehow some sometimes figure out the combination by uh, this this type of uh, approach so let's see how we approach from here and what i did was to to go through all those uh, positions where i feel there is well it seems like Look at this, there is a gate, or it might be a false gate. Zooming in on that, what you see is it turns a certain range of numbers, and then there's a short click. 
What I did to make this more accurate was to add a piece of post-it to make this point a little bit more clear. It doesn't have to be perfect because it's all relative. So, And then it was easier for me to, uh, to find the, the numbers. Um, and then what I did was to figure out all those positions. So for example here I have it's 26 and 22. You see almost 26. A little bit more than 22. So what I did was okay. Let's say this range is from 22 to 26. The average is 24. And now I try to find the next one. I find the next one. Oh, I found another one. That's 14 to... Is that right? 14 to 17. Write it down again. 14 to 17. Etc. Etc. So th that's the way I went through the whole range. Finding out where those numbers are. And finding this list of numbers. And there was one where it was very special. I have to tension it again with one hand this time. And this felt really different. It was a louder click um, and a wider range. And it runs from five, if you can see. 5 to, let's see, what it is, it's almost 11, not completely, yeah, that's 16 together, it's about 8, a little bit on that side, because this was not almost 11, so maybe 7 and a half, I'm not 100% sure, yeah, and I did it like this, and finding that there were 12 numbers. So 12 gates or false gates uh, with this one feeling like, well, it felt different at least. It, it, was a, it was more like a real gate. Then my assumption was that um, having these 12 numbers, it could be that I uh, would be feeling false gates on the third wheel with the true gate on the third wheel, because there is a connection between the dial and uh, the final wheel, the third wheel. Or the other assumption I had was maybe those false gates are partly gates on the second and the third, first wheel. I was not sure about that, but at least it seemed like um, maybe these are gates. And the only thing I have to do, if I assume that's on that if i assume this gate of the third gate would be 7.5 then and keep that steady in my trying to dial the number then i only have to vary one and two and what if that was an assumption what if one and two also use these numbers so this would be the third gate, the gate of the third wheel, and then I have other numbers which might be gates on wheel one and two. So that's what I tried. I, I made a list in Excel, you can also do it on paper, with all possible combinations of uh, those, actually those 12 numbers with two wheels keeping the last wheel the, uh, the same value, 7.5, because that was my assumption that would be a true gate on the third wheel. So that was my attempt. So what did I have? I had a, a possible number for the last wheel, for the last to dial number, and I had 144 possible combinations for the wheels one and two, which in real life are a bit less because I also discovered 
you cannot have uh, wheel one and two the same number and you cannot have two and three wheel two and three the same number because that's mechanically not a, not a possibility with this mechanism. So a little bit less than 144, still a lot, but at least it's much less than we have 100 numbers possible on this dial. So that's 100 times 100 times 100 is 1 million combinations. This is uh, 144 looks much more feasible. Well, to, to try these different combinations, you first have to know how this safe is being dialed because there are some differences between those uh, combination locks of those safes. So let's check that out. And this one, um, I figured it out from uh, another uh, video someone made from another type of safe. This one, in, instead of dialing uh, left, like in the normal, uh, more modern versions of these safes, you have to dial right first. That would be the first number. Um, you get some advice on you have to dial it four times round, but what I do is you hear this clicks, click, it's picking up uh, next wheel. So I'm turning third and it's picking up wheel two. And this is wheel one. So if I turn the other side, which is the first dial, the first number, you have to dial clockwise, right. Uh, if I've picked up all the wheels like this, then I'm okay and I'm dialing the number. So I keep turning right and I dial the number. For example, I had this number found 24. Yeah. Then I want to dial back. Let's take another number on my list. It was about uh, 15 and a half. And what you see then, I was starting here with the first number. Now I go left, so counterclockwise, and I get this click. It, now it's picking up the next wheel. And now you have to dial the number. They also say in those videos, okay, when you dial the second number, you have to pass it once or twice, depending on the lock. What I do is just listen to the mechanics. Like this was the number I dialed, 24. And I go to 15 and a half, but just it has to pick up the wheel first. So now it's picking up the wheel. And I go to 15 and a half. Be careful not to pass this number because then you're lost. It's only it only works with the third wheel that you can be a little bit more floppy. And the third was seven and a half. You can go there immediately. So it's like this. And even with the third wheel, you can pass without any problem. Let's test that. It's not working. And uh, it seems to be still in the gate of seven and a half. Third wheel gate and nothing else, no result. But this was the demo on how to dial this. So let's take the next step and go through all the combinations. So when dialing these combinations, uh, at a certain point in time, I found a combination which led to a little bit different behavior. So. Let's show that 24 and then I had 41.5 and again 7, 7.5 seven and, half. and it, it had this additional click, this click and I was like okay this sounds different let's let's take a note that um, dialing 24, 41.5 and 7.5 had a different sound. And then later, doing my uh, all the combinations I created in Excel, uh, I had this click with this combination and then I had the same thing with another combination and the other combination was uh, another number, I don't remember the number, but also with 
and seven and a half for the second and the third wheel. Uh, this, yeah, second and the third wheel. So that meant it seemed like 31.5 might be special and a good um, solution because it gave this additional click. So with that assumption of the second wheel and the third wheel still keeping that the same, I tried to vary this number. And that's only with the range of 12, it's only 12 possibilities, nine is one because it cannot be the same as the second wheel. So that's what I tried to vary only wheel one and keeping wheel two and three at my assumed numbers. So uh, turning everything until all wheels are set in one direction. Then uh, let's go to 82. Let's go back for wheel two counterclockwise. It's hitting, it's taking the wheel. And we go to 41.5. That seemed to be a good number. And then we go back to 7.5. And now it opens. There we are. It's one open safe. It's, uh, I'm sorry, it's empty because the owner who asked me to do this already took out his stuff. He was very happy that he could reach it again. What I can do now, together with you, is to see what the mechanism looks like from the inside. Now let's take a screwdriver and open this. It's only one screw. It's a little bit difficult with my left hand. Okay, there we go. Screw. There we are with the mechanism. You can see the latch completely inserts into the slots. That's a nice mechanism and it's connected to the to the real safety. I'm not sure what you call this thing. Okay. And what I can show you now, apart from the slots seem to be aligned, if I turn, and this is turning the, the dial and it's completely connected, fixed to the third wheel. And the click you hear is this pin picking up the next wheel. Maybe you can see that, I'm not sure. Now it's turning the second wheel. And if I turn on, yes, I'm turning clockwise, like in the first go, then it's picking up the first wheel. So when I dial, it was 82, our lucky combination. Let's see, oh no, I passed, and now you can see why passing is a bad idea. Hopefully the light is good enough. Let's zoom in a little bit. Um, if I dial this, and I try to dial 82 and I pass it a little bit and I go back then well wheel one is not going back so it doesn't work okay so let's dial the number again to see how it works from the inside and it seemed to be 82 then we go to 41.5 and we go back to 7 you can see the third wheel you can still control without any problem. And there we have the safe open. And now some additional information, the mystery on uh, what we were feeling in the beginning. So let's scramble this and see what we were feeling in the beginning. Well, for sure, this was the thing I felt when I thought I had found the gate, which was about seven and a half. It felt a bit different. You can really feel the gate there. And now for the other ones, 
the wheel 3 is uh, bigger, so it has a larger diameter, if you can see that. And that's, I think, on purpose that you cannot feel wheel 2 and 1 while doing this feeling stuff. But the strange thing about uh, the third wheel is that they built in false gates like this. That's what we were feeling. And I think the design flaw from the safe makers is that these false gates, which are meant to trick us, um, actually seem to be on logical uh, places, like every 30 degrees of the circle. And it seems that uh, the slots of the second and the first wheel are also on the same angle, at the same angle. So with these false gates, you can find out the 12 numbers which are most likely to be used on these wheels. You can find out the number of the third wheel. And then you actually have, what was also my hope and assumption, only 144 combinations. I'm not sure if this is really true. I didn't check it completely, but at least it worked out for me. And it's really funny that they put in false gates, I think, to, to fool us. But it's actually a helpful uh, thing with this uh, safe. So hopefully that was useful for you. If you have a safe like this, good luck with that. It only took me in the end. Well, I had to figure out all those uh, things and do some research and uh, design a strategy that took some time, that took a few hours. But um, once I uh, designed the strategy, it only took me 58 attempts to get to the right number. So that's very fast. It was really, I was really surprised I didn't have to dial the 144 at all. And even if you have to dial the full 144, it's still doable. So good luck, have fun, and uh, let me know in the comments what your experiences are, if you have any questions um, about my approach. Have a great day.